is the age-old racing excuse. You only beat me because you're lighter. But is it true? Does weight really make a difference? Now you may be thinking, of course it does. Most karting championships, BIKC, EKS, Club 100, just to name a few, all have weight categories. But I've been in many races with mixed weight divisions and I've seen some heavy people absolutely dominate. I've also seen light people unable to keep it in a straight line. And especially in wet conditions, you definitely see heavier people doing better. Now the theory is they've got more weight, so they load up their tires, giving them more grip, more stability, more traction, etc. Where light people don't have that option. If we've tried to compare it to Formula One, Formula One achieves this through aerodynamics. Now we won't get into complications of it, but long story short, the higher the downforce, the more stability you have in a high speed corner. Low downforce, and you don't have that option. You have to lift, brake, possibly. Less time spent full throttle is basically what I'm getting at. If we take Cops Corner at Silverstone for an example, get the downforce right, and you'll be able to go around that full throttle. Get it wrong. But can you change your driving style? To have the best of both worlds having a bit more weight but being able to carry more speed through the corner over a lap would you improve so we're going to do two sessions we're going to do one as we are is in, in our god-given natural form and then two the second session we're going to do with this 30 plus kilo weighted vest now the logical among you are probably thinking there's no way that's 30 plus kilos i just see the way he lifted it you obviously don't know who I am. You underestimate me. However, on this time, you're correct. These are some of the weights here. Long story short, they both give you different outcomes on the track. Being lighter gives you better acceleration out of corners. Being heavier gives you better stability in corners, potentially allowing you to carry more speed. So what better track to do it than Buckmore Park? Not only will we compare lap times, we'll also break down the sector times, composing a sector one, sector two and sector three to really understand what's going on. Now, before we do anything, before we go on track, we do need to get our weight. So full race gear and we're weighing in at 73.4 kilos. Now with the weighted vest on, which was heavy by the way, it's 106.1 kilos, which is an increase of 32.7 kilos. So as we go out on track, we was in cart number eight and this cart fell it didn't feel all there, I'll be honest. The brakes weren't too clever. The best way I could describe it, it felt lazy. It did like to slide around, but it doesn't matter. We're not here for fastest lap. We're not trying to set no records. All we want is consistent laps. Um, and we're going to do three laps before we put the weighted vest on. And now the hardest thing of doing this, it was, there's other people on track, not as experienced, let's say. And so trying to get clean laps consistently without bumping into traffic, it's a full, fully booked session by the way, um, was more of the challenge. But I was also with some people and obviously the group I was with obviously wanted to race amongst each other. So yeah, I'm trying to have, I'm trying to set consistent laps while trying to have fun battling them. But we got the job done. Three laps without the vest, three laps with the vest. So. We're coming towards the end of the first lap. And this is going to be our benchmark. Uh, this is what we want to be aiming for. I think like this was our quickest lap. So it's a 50.6. And I want to do these laps back to back. One after the other. God willing, of course. So as you can see, uh, traffic, and this is what we struggled with trying to do this, but we managed to get past without slowing down. Didn't affect us, so no harm done. But as you can see, three carts in front, and I thought they're gonna start battling, we're just gonna get held up. So we abandoned that one, um, create a bit of space, 
we got past them, some free air, and we go again. So again, you can see lap traffic again. But we're still on the racing line. It's all right. We didn't quite touch the apex there just because we weren't sure what they're going to do. But it didn't really affect us. If I'm honest, I took a bit more curb just to make up for it. So steering input was the same. So there's our three laps complete. So not the greatest of times. I'm pretty sure we've done better than that. Or what did we get in the damp? I think it was 50.7. So that sort of confirms for me. I, I, am I going to blame the go-kart? Not really. Like I said, it doesn't matter. We were just here for one thing and one thing only. So we've set our three laps. And now we're going to put the weighted vest on. And... Um, yeah, I struggled there. I tried to lift it straight over my head. I thought, that ain't happening. So I had to do it to the side. So as we come out of the pit lane and we do our out lap before we do our time laps, I'll tell you what it felt like. It felt completely different. Without the weight vest, I was sliding around. Rear was stepping out of me, understeering slightly. But with the weighted vest on, I could absolutely send I promise you, I could send it through the corner. The rear didn't step out once. It was like, obviously it makes sense, more weight pushing the cart down into the ground. It makes sense. So now it's about changing my driving style to maximize the weight I've got to try and get the best time possible. Could I change my driving style to be even faster with that extra grip? Now it did feel like I could come on the power so much earlier going through a corner. But coming out the corner, I don't know, it just like, it felt like it took a while to get going again. So even though I'm carrying more speed for it, I'm not getting to the speed that I'm normally used to, if that makes sense. So we had to change some things around, adapt it, and I felt like I'd, I'd mastered it quite quickly. And this is what we're about to see across the line. And it's a 51-0, which I didn't think was bad. Not in the slightest. And again, we're gonna try and go back to back but that crash in front of us just put us off. We just abandoned that lap and we'll go again. Again, coming to lap traffic but with the weight we weren't quite on the racing line but I felt like I could just send it around there quite easily um, and still carry the speed I recommend everyone do it like if it, it was it was an experience and I actually prefer driving at this weight. like I said it just felt so much more stable so much more confident in the car I did like I said the brakes were, were too clever so like it was sketchy on the brakes but we, we figured it out quite quickly and um, all in all, like I said, I actually prefer driving with the weighted bear. So as we come across the line, it's another 51-0. So I think we was quite consistent. I think we've done the job we set out to do. There's our fastest laps across the two weights. And that's the difference of three and a half temps. If you need that visualized, 
that's what it looks like. So, onto the sector times. So we've taken the best sector times of each weight of the whole session. So our best sector one time with no weighted vest, a 20.711. Sector two was a 14.859. Sector three was a 14.865, giving us an ultimate lap time of 50.435. Now onto the weighted vest. Sector one, our fastest time, 20.961. So that's a difference of two and a half temps there. Sector two was a 14.825. We actually gained time. We gained 0 0.034, which makes sense seeing as it's downhill being heavier. And then sector three, 15.088, which we lost just over two temps, 0 0.223. And our ultimate lap time, 50.874. On the ultimate lap times across the two weights, we had lost 0.439. So what was the weight to time ratio? For every nine to 10 kilos we had on, we had lost a tenth, which is the equivalent of a, a 24 pack of Coke. No, not that Coke, this Coke. However, I don't want you to walk away thinking for every 10 kilos you've put on, you've lost a tenth. I don't believe that because if that's the case, this is what the graph would look like. I, I, I don't think that to be true. In matter of fact, graph would look more like this. If you put 10 kilos on, you probably lose half a tenth, if even that. But as the weight increases, you lose a lot more time quickly. However, again, I think the graph could potentially look like this. And let me explain, like Formula One, that's how we started this with their downfalls. They do not go to Monaco with a Monza setup. So just like Formula One, is there a right downfalls package? Is there a perfect weight for each track? Who knows? Maybe in the next one, that's what we'll be doing. But until then, unless your friends use it as an excuse and you're beating them by four or five seconds and they're only a few kilos heavier than you, that excuse is lame. Send them this, let them know they're trash. I've left the um, live timings in the description. More than welcome to go through them. I tried to keep this as accurate as possible and fair as possible. I think I've done that. I don't think anyone can argue with me about it in the comments, but I'm sure I'll find out. I'm sure there's going to be someone who has something to say. Until the next one.